All right, so we're here with Gary Robbins uh, at the Berkeley Marathons again. <laughs> again, yeah. Um, so you got in on Wednesday night. Um, what's the plan this year? Yeah, it's been a hectic couple of days, actually. There's a lot to accomplish when you hit the ground. Uh, but thankfully, everything is uh, set up, and now we're just waiting for the map to come out. Uh, plan this year is to get through the fifth and final lap and not have to come back and start all over again. Uh, I spent quite a bit of time working on uh, navigation orienteering skills this year, so that should be of assistance. And we did get our course description, and I just read through that, and it sounds like two minor changes to the course from last year. So that means 95% of the course is consistent, which is great news for me and other runners that have experience. Um, I may even be using the same map I used last year because the changes don't seem too significant. So I'll take the experience from last year and hopefully allow myself to navigate a bit better. So last year you had um, you had you had a great accomplice. You were you were running with an experienced yeah. with experienced uh, Barkley runner. Um, what's the plan this year? Who are you working with? Uh, what's the strategy at least for the first couple of laps? So interestingly enough, the in my estimation, certainly my limited knowledge of the race, this is the most competitive field they've ever seen. Mm -hmm. And I have two predictions for the race this year. My Ooh. first prediction is that the fifth lap bell will ring four times. Okay. I'm not predicting four finishers, but I do think they'll set the record for the most people to make the last lap. I have gone against anyone else in saying that, but I do believe it for my knowledge of the people who are here. And I think after the first lap, there will just n naturally be a group of six or seven of us that are going to come in together. There's, um, there's a large pack of very accomplished runners here this year. Uh, plus a couple of unknowns and saying that there's going to be six or seven of us coming in together also allows for another two or three accomplished runners that won't um, be able to, to hang with the lead pack. So in saying that I think that there will be uh, quite a bit of camaraderie for as long as you want it to be and uh, <laughs> and <clears throat> and that you will you will naturally find someone to work with um, for four laps until you have to make a decision and go on your own. What's the thing you thought about the most coming into this race from last year? Uh, <clears throat> it's, 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 it's like an emotional attachment to this now. Um, the thing I've thought about the most is just how difficult it was to fail last year and to have to come back and then how motivated I've been to come back and to get through this thing and to find the mental resolve that I had a year ago and, and figure out the damn course. and. Uh, and not have to come back a third time. <laughs> and why why is it so special? I mean, like obviously, you know, we were, we we walked through the the prison this morning with Laz, and you know, he, there's just there's so much that's been layered on year over year. But like, what is it about this race? What, what is it about this race that compelled you to come back and do this? I mean, the history of the race first and foremost is really cool. The the figures, the people you get to know if you do your research, uh, for who built this race. That's fun to be and see that community. But the race itself is so unique in the fact that you're going to fail. I mean, that's the all but all but <laughs> foregone conclusion for everybody that shows up. And there aren't a lot of things in this world that athletically in this sport, people can train for months or years on end and know that they will never actually be able to finish the race because the race continues to get harder. And there's an allure to that, to knowing it's out the, at the outer reaches of human potential. And to also believe in yourself enough to know that you are, it's within your grasp if you can just make it happen. And that's the, the what gravitated me towards this race initially, the whole concept of it is all but impossible and I want to see and I want last year confirmed my belief that I, I could pull this off and this year is hopefully the year that I will pull this off. Now, um... Just for, for, for those that have I don't know, maybe seen the documentary, have done a little bit of reading about it, but have never been out into these mountains before, what are some of the craziest aspects, like some like really crazy memories that you had from last year, like weird moments? Well, I don't know what's real and what's not at this point. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, the, thing, uh, the thing with the documentary is that it does, it's an amazing documentary, mm -hmm. but they weren't allowed to film on course. That's right. So there's not the you can't tell by watching the documentary how hard it actually is. Yeah. It wasn't until I got a loop in last year. I was actually kind of taken aback and at shock at for how difficult it was. The stats don't add up to it being as hard as it actually is. And uh, and the hardest thing with this race is the, the navigation and the off-trail component of it. And the fact that if you look around, there's not a lot discerning this from this. Right, yeah. So when you're awake for two days and you're trying to find a trail here, 
it's more than easy to end up going this direction here and right. not recognize anything around you. So, you know, other people think like, well, you've got to be able to to identify terrain and recognize. And yeah, I'm pretty good at recognizing terrain when I'm on it a second time. Uh, there's not a lot to discern anything here, especially when you haven't slept. Hmm. And I see you brought your family this yeah. year in. So what's, what's, what's that like? I mean, well, we were all here last year, so it's yeah. been fun to come back again. Um, Reed has been uh, on multiple camping trips and it's, it's fun to see him running through the campground this year when he wasn't even walking a year ago yeah. and just to see the differences in him and um, and I wouldn't want to be here without my family. Um, as little time as I want to see them in the duration of the race, because that means <laughs> I'm wasting time if I'm spending it with them. Uh, it's pretty special to know that every loop I come in and I get to, to see them and get a, a hug and a kiss from the family. So what's the strategy, speaking of the loops, are you gonna... Uh, my strategy is basically loop one and two to be less than 10 minutes in camp. If oh. I'm longer than 10 minutes, I'm, I've made a mistake and something is, is not clicking. Lap three will depend on the time of day. Uh, if I have banked enough time to believe that I can sleep, which is not a guarantee, then it will be either lap three or lap four, and it will be dependent on when the race starts and what time of day I end up back in camp. If I end up back in camp in the middle of the day, it would be foolhardy to waste daylight. Mm -hmm. uh, if I end up back in camp at night and feel like the time is aligning, then I'll probably try to lay down for an hour or two. Nice. And um, so regardless if you finish it, yeah. will you be back? If I finish, I have no intention of coming back. <laughs> like, that, I, I don't understand how Brett Monty and Jared Campbell are wired to want to do this more than once. Yeah. Eh, who knows? Maybe I'll say something different eventually yeah. if, when I finish. Um, I would love to come back and be a part of it and support yeah. it and hang out in camp. But I have yeah. no desire to come back and, and race it again anytime soon if I'm fortunate <laughs> enough to get through the full five still standing. Does does it it does it become it, or is it sort of building up to being like the big lifetime achievement yeah, for you if you get really this thing is. done? It, uh, undoubtedly, yeah. yeah, it absolutely is. Like I think the 14 people who have completed this recognize it as a crowning achievement, and I don't see how anyone after them wouldn't um, wouldn't feel the exact same way. I think that's why people are here, is they know how rare it is to be able to pull it off, and that uh, you're one of a very small group if you can. Good luck. Thank you.